myself and John L. Mokadem um, over the next four weeks. So just to give you some context for this training, um, John and I love teaching together. We met on our apprenticeship with Michael Neal back in 2014 and we have been 3P teaching partners ever since. So we, I jokingly call him my 3P husband. Uh, many I know will have met his work already through the podcast episodes he's already done with us. But I really wanted to bring John into this deeper peace of mind membership because he needs to be here, right? Like with, with all the people we've got teaching and sharing on this program, um, it would be strange if he wasn't here. So I invited him to come and do a program with us. And um, but he, like I talk a lot about anxiety and he talks a lot about health and we didn't want to talk about that. We wanted to have something completely fresh and new that you haven't heard us talk about before anywhere else. And so what we decided we wanted to do was to look and explore some of the teachings of Sydney Banks that have spoken to us in his writing or his audios or his videos and that have, you know, meant something for us or are currently alive for us right now in terms of our understanding. So how this is going to work is one week John will have a quote, he kicks off this week and he and I will discuss that quote and then the next week I will have a quote and we'll talk about what that means to us. I'd love you as you go through this just to sit and almost when you hear the quote like hit pause and just reflect for a moment on whether it's meaningful to you, it may not be. But if it is, like what comes up through you when you consider that quote? Um, what does it mean to you? And then whether it means something to you or it just doesn't this time around, no problem. I'd like to invite you to listen to the conversation that John and I have to see if it brings up anything fresh and new for you. And if so, come share it in our Facebook group. You know, we always love to hear like what you're hearing as you're listening to the programs. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to let John kick off with this, this opening episode as we explore under the, the umbrella theme of love and understanding some of the beautiful words of Sydney Banks. Enjoy. Okay, so John is going to kick off with his um, with his quote to start us off on this whole series. So um, do you want to read it out, John, and then we can have a chat about it? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so the quote I found is, you have to go beyond all concepts and you will find it in the stillness of your mind, in the quiet chambers of your mind, when you go from the known to the unknown, from the physical to the spiritual. When you hear beyond the words, an inner light goes on and it brings out inner knowledge and wisdom, spiritual intelligence before the contamination of human thought. It is a feeling. You're looking for a feeling. Don't listen to the words. Look for a feeling. And that's one of Sid Banks's quotes from the Long Beach lectures. And I don't know, I can, do you want me to say why I picked this? Yeah, why did you do that one? Yeah, so... I'll tell you why I picked this. So I was, I found myself um, recently in a back and forth with someone who was asking me, they, they weren't a client or anything. They'd been on, I think on a meetup I'd done or something. And um, they were sending me question after question, after question, after question. And I was kind of pointing them to the fact that there was no point in me trying to answer the question. And that was then met with a question. Yeah. <laughs> And, and this was somebody i have been talking to, and, and I said, you know what? I said, it strikes me that you're not looking for uh, the, the actual conceptual answer to the question. You're looking for an experience, and you're not going to get that from this kind of back and forth that we're having on email. And, um, and, and, it, and, and what I mean by that, and why I picked this quote, was that we often come into this conversation looking for answers. Right. And it strikes me that there is an ultimate answer. I think Sid actually said that somewhere that, you know, the, 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 there's an ultimate answer, which is to find the peace, the quiet, the well-being, the knowing we're OK, to find this space inside of us, which is before our concepts. It's before our conceptual answers are 
nice shiny ideas are oh yes you know thought creates feeling concept like there's something before all of these words and before our attempt to find a conceptual thinking based answer that is what we're actually looking for and the, the temptation we've got is that we keep being duped even to be around the principles and to listen to to what the to listen to what the principal teachers are saying to listen to what people like you and I are saying you know it, it's actually the more we get into the content of that and sometimes we have to but if you look at what the content is pointing us to it's to say it's to actually go well look before the content look before the conceptual and there's a feeling there which is one that seems to exist before we're trying, before we're figuring out, before we've gone off down a rabbit hole. And that space for me is what really transforms people, not getting a nice conceptual answer to our question. It's actually touching a deeper space inside of us and seeing the nature of that, seeing that that is something that is inside of us no matter what no matter what's happening in the world this space is not only a space of well-being but it's also the space from where all our answers come from from where our connection exists from you know um where where decisions get made like the more we see that space is before this thinking crazy mind the more it starts to just do the work in and of itself. Um, I'll, let me put that on the table because I could wrap it on for hours. So. No, I, um, I get what you're saying. And I think that we're so predisposed to form. Yeah. As in, we're so predisposed to try and think that the answer lies at the end of a thought. We, yeah. think it, we think it lies in the world of things, getting our life right, getting the circumstances right, getting our health right, getting our state of mind right. And if we could just sort all those things out, then, then we'd, of course, we'd find peace of mind. If we could just get the bills <laughs> paid, if I could just fix my broken leg, if I could just get the kids back to school, if I could just whatever, we set it up conditionally like that. And then, and then sometimes... It, it, we forget about circumstances and we're resting with something in our minds, wrestling and trying to figure it out. And it might be about the principles. Or it might be about flower beds in my case. It might be about your neighbours or it might be about your family or whatever. And, and we, we, our predisposition is to head that way into mm. thought to try and find, well, sometimes we think if we can just find the answer to the question, like so stupid, if you just find the answer to the question to how many dahlias will go in the bed, then we can, <laughs> if we could just find the answer to the question of how we manage homeschooling, then we, then we find this, whatever it is that we're looking for, that we're not even sure what it is. And yeah. we think that we have to do the thing or have the decision or get the closure yeah. to fall into peace of mind. And so, and that's what we're trying to do at school. It's what we're trying to do by our society. So we have a predisposition towards figuring it out and, and manipulating and using our minds to try and get an answer. So when we come to this conversation as well, oh, I know what it is. I'm looking for a thought. They think that people think they're looking for I did. I think I'm, I'm listening because I want a new thought. Like I want a, I want a realization and a realization is going to be a <gasps> thought creates feeling or a wow. You don't have to believe everything you think. And, yeah. and, and, and when I get that new thought, then I'll find peace of mind. And what, yeah. what this, this quote speaks to is, oh, no, it's the other way. Mm -hmm. and, and we don't understand. We're like, well, how do, I, how do I understand this if I don't ask questions and, and if I don't get new thoughts as answers to the questions? I want new concepts to replace my old concepts, surely. Yeah. yeah. And... What you're pointing to is what I loved seeing is like, and we'll talk about this a little bit on the next video, but it's like, no, the everything you're looking for is already there, but for the squirreling around up here. It's mm -hmm. the starting place. And we don't 
credit how simple that is. That might sound complicated, but we discredit, we don't give enough credence to the simple feeling of well-being that we fall into right. over and over again all day. It's like we brush it to one side and go, yeah, now how do I get, how do I feel better? And it's yeah. like, well, you just were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but how do I do it tomorrow? You're just taking yourself out of it. And I don't think we realize that everyday, ordinary simpleness, the availability of what it is that we're looking for. Yeah, I mean, it's, we can even conceptualize what well-being is. Mm. So, you know, we can set, especially when it says, and, and this is why words are so tricky, you know, look for a feeling and it's like, oh, okay, so is it, I'm looking for happiness or I'm looking for this or I'm looking for that. And it's, and, and so it now becomes a concept and we're now looking out for that thing. And the more we're in the squirreling of the looking out in our head, the more busy we're becoming. And, and that's the thing. It's sort of, it's it's something that's there before the looking um you know it's something that's there before the trying it's something that's there before the figuring out it's something that's there before the resistance and and it's so completely counter to what we've been conditioned to think you know as you say we're always on this journey of trying to figure out get somewhere conceptualize it nail it down in our head you know, and it even says, you know, when you go from the known to the unknown, so not when you're in some concept, but when you're not in some concept, when you're not in, in, in an idea of what you think it is to have it nailed down, right? So that's so different to how most of us operate. And I know for myself that one of the reasons why I discounted that space um, because I had it, uh, you know, I, I remember distinct moments in my life where I dropped into it. Um, one of which was when I was sick. Um, and, you know, my life was literally a smoldering wreckage. There was nothing that looked right. And yet I had this moment sitting with my yoga teacher where I got really, really quiet. And I, it, all that happened in that moment was I'd stop seeking. I'd stop looking I'd stop thinking about my life for a minute. I'd stop trying to troubleshoot it and get somewhere or feel better or anything. And there was just this kind of, oh, I'm okay. Now, I discounted it because I didn't also see, and this is why I like the word well-being, because the, the being part is, is the part where we're just okay. But the well bit is the well of potential. It's the well where everything comes from. Right now, what I didn't see was that that space was where life was lived from. That was the space from where everything that, you know, I would know to do would come from. But because I didn't see that, it was like, oh, well, this feeling of well-being and peace and quiet. Oh, that's lovely. But I can't live there. I can't let myself be there because I won't do anything. I won't make decisions. I won't solve all these problems that I've currently got in my life. I won't get up. And, and so I didn't see that that space was actually where life was lived from um, all the time. And so, you know, I, I'd mistaken the noisy busyness as being the driver of the car. Um, but it was just a commentary. It was never actually a truth about me living life. And just to make that really practical, right? That's like me going... Yeah, but if I don't figure out how many dahlias to plant in the bed, then dahlias won't get planted in the bed and they'll just sit there in right. the cold frame and die because no one planted them in the bed. So, of course, I've got to figure out how many and where they've got to go and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, what's really interesting is that what we're pointing to is, no, the dahlias either will or won't get planted in the bed and it's got nothing to do with what happens up here. Right, right. It's so true. I mean, somebody um, asked me jokingly yesterday because I told them about, you know, the study getting published or going to be published. And they said, oh, how did you do that? I said, I'm not really sure, to be honest. I think life did it and dragged me along. Kicking <laughs> and screaming most of the time. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's like it, it was it's so odd to think in a way that 
we aren't driving life in our thinking. We've got enough of us have got ideas in our head that seem to correspond with us thinking about something and then us, you know, and then that thing happening. But there's also lots of times when we think about doing things and those things don't happen as well, but we seem to forget that. And we go, oh, those are anomalies. And really I'm making it happen. If I just try hard enough or I think more, I'll make it happen. But that's not really true. I mean, there are loads of things that we think, yeah, I'll just try hard. I'm really going to make it happen this time. You just don't do them. Yeah. Why? Because apparently life is not interested in having that thing done. Um, Dave, what I love, and I can, because I know one of the things that I see come up again and again, you probably have this with clients as well. Yeah. Is where in Sid's statement, he's talking about looking for a feeling. Yeah. People take that on. And then they say, well, should I go this way or this way? Like, it, it, and, and what's the feeling behind it? Yeah. And they're trying to analyze what it doesn't feel very good. So I won't do it because that, that's what the principles say. Like if I'm not feeling in a good space while I'm doing it, then I shouldn't do it. So they, what they do is they start a project or they start a new endeavor in life and then they check in with the feeling all the time. Like, right. should I do this or is it not? No, no, no. I don't feel good about it. Therefore, I shouldn't do it. Yeah. And, yeah. And they're trying to use what they understand about this, this feeling space to then combine that with judgment and analysis and human personal mind decision making. Mm. And, and I often get that question. So if it doesn't feel good, that means I shouldn't do it. Right. Mm. And that isn't what we're pointing to. We're pointing no. to something that's way got, got no edges to it. That's a very like you can almost take that, I, but I feel like this and put it in a box, right? And what it sounds really hard to describe, but it's, it's that limitless space. Like I remember, yeah. and I went to go and see Dickin just before Christmas and I had this moment where I was walking along the beach and, and I just was in a beautiful feeling, right? Like yeah. it was, it looked like, oh, the sun's setting over the sea and here I am like staying in this beautiful place in the corner and, like all was well with the world and it was and it was a beautiful feeling and then as I walked back like that was as I was going off for my lunch and then as I came back I noticed it had left me yeah and I was like oh I want that back but I know that comes <laughs> when I and I, I, I know I've lost it because I've started thinking about stuff a lot yeah. So I tell you what, I'll stop thinking I need to put my thought down stop thinking so much so I can get that feeling back that I had on this exact stretch of the road right. an hour ago. And so I was trying to stop thinking and trying to stop thinking and trying to stop thinking. And, and I was getting really frustrated with myself for trying to stop thinking. And eventually I gave up in frustration <clears throat> and annoyance. And an hour later, I noticed I was back there again. Mm -hmm. But what I had been trying to do in that period of like trying to drop my thinking the best way I had of describing it on the day was it's like I'd taken on, on that first experience of that beautiful feeling. It's like I'd taken a snapshot of the sky and then gone, Oh, that's it. That's what it, that's the beautiful feeling they're all talking about. That's what they're pointing to. That's it. Yeah. And then on my walk back, when I was trying to recover it, it was like, I was going around the sky and going, is it there? Is it there? Where is, where is it gone? Where's it gone? <laughs> and it's like, no, it's the sky. It's yeah, not that thing. little square of the sky that you, yeah, you know, we turn it the, like you say, we turn the feeling turn it into a thing, thing. and that, yeah. to, and then trying to drop thought because you know in your intellect that that's what's required because the space we're looking for is the space before thought, so it must happen before thought. So therefore, if I could just get rid of thought, then I know I'd be there. Yeah, it's so counterintuitive, but. There's nothing you can do that's listening to the words, that's listening to the form, that's listening to the thoughts in your mind, right? Yeah. And time and time again, for me, I find the most helpful thing is to know, oh, not that way. And no, there's nothing that I can do about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that's kind of yeah. what I realized in that giving up in a huff of frustration and, and stromping with my mind was oh I can't I can't do that that's not me that 
that takes thought and dumps it. I cannot do that. It's not possible for me. And in the realization of that, me gave up. Yeah. And and yeah. then and then the natural space that's there just arises all on its own as it proved to do so within minutes of me well, dropping well, that. So so what is interesting for me is I because I totally hear that and resonate with there and then I look at the quote again and there's a command there don't listen to the words look for a feeling so here's a prescription and somebody reading that going oh well Sid says go look for this feeling well okay I'm gonna go looking for it now and I, I sympathize because <laughs> I know I know what we've, all been there. <laughs> we've all, all been there and here's what I can say about it is that well, as teachers, we're all doing the best we can to point people to the fact that they are what they see. Mm -hmm. And sometimes what happens is you point someone, you say, well, you're looking for a feeling and don't do this and don't do that. And that person's going to go and do it. And they might feel worse for it for a bit. And then at some point they're going to go, oh, man, that Sydney Banks, that Nicola Bird, John Omokadem, they're full of it. They don't know what they're talking about. And they go, I'm done. <laughs> and the point at which they get done, having been frustrated looking, is the point at which they suddenly connect to it. Right? And they go, oh, okay, here it is. And, and it sort of lands because they've stopped the looking. But, but they've got to the point of, of touching it as a result of being frustrated looking for it. Yeah. Right? So there is some aspect of that with this which is that we can point people to the fact that this is something that is before the looking and before the seeking and before the thinking and all of that kind of stuff but there's a journey that people go on often which is one of thinking looking and seeking first and trying and, to stop thinking that we trying, stop. trying to stop thinking That's and right. then it's just my thinking but a bit of that as well just for good measure and I'm hoping people are watching this and go, oh, okay, okay, because this is what we've all done. Or every single one of us has listened to these things and gone, oh, well, he says you're looking for this and seeking it and thinking about it. It's like, oh, you're <laughs> mad for a while until at some point you just, you give up and then you feel the truth behind what's being pointed to, right? And sometimes we have to just prescriptively go off and do these things in order to get frustrated give up and then touch it and that is the essence of this is that that feeling if i if i try and characterize it it is it, it it's sort of it's not the ups and downs of our experience that's going to happen anyway we are going to go up and down you know in the same way some days it's sunny and some days it's cloudy that's going to happen but there's something that sees all of that there's something that looks at all of that that is what we are and is spacious is infinite is expansive it is before the ups and downs of this experience that we're having and and the more you start to see that that is there the less you need to look for it in the ups and downs the less you need to look for it in the circumstances because you start to see oh this is just what is there before everything, right? It's, it's spacious. It's not in form. It's not a thing, so to speak. It's, um, there's, there's a quote that was so helpful to me. I, well, I don't know. It just really touched my heart, which was like, we're all looking for God with God's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> right. A lovely quote. Who said that? I think it was Adya Shanti. It's like we're looking for God with God's eyes. That, yeah. Oh my God, it gives me goosebumps all the way down to my toes. Yeah. Like we Which already is what? are it. That's it. And that's what I ended up saying, you know, to this other person. I said, you are what you seek. And of course, that will be heard as a concept on an email, right? To sit with somebody and to help them drop into that space, to help to presence that feeling of god that is in them that is in me that is in everybody else that's what changes people because when you touch that space you see oh that's not something that i have to seek that's something that i am and so every time we're lost and we will be like you don't live in this space 
you will be duped by the human experience. You will go off seeking, you will go off figuring things out and looking for stuff. Like, still happens to me all the bloody time. in a grumpy mood. And yeah. Like, mood and shouting at people. And <laughs> like, all of that goes. You don't get rid of that, but you become so much more playful and easier with it. Because having touched that space more and more and more and seen that it's not in whatever the mind's complaining about right now, it's like, okay, I can have my humanness and I can do my thing where I try and figure it out. And, but to do that, knowing that that is inside of you, that feeling, that depth, that well-being is inside of you, it means you just aren't so enamored with it. You don't, you, you, there's so much less desperation to figure out the nuances of the mind's complaints when you've touched that feeling. And that's the transformative part about it. I mean, I can imagine somebody, you know, if this person I was talking about, like if they, if, if they did touch that space more and more, like the questions that were coming up in their mind, I don't think they'd be quite so relevant because this is like the answer to everything. You are it, you are okay. You are what you seek, not conceptually though. Yeah, if you think about that, it'll screw you up. Like for me, yeah. it's just like when I find myself caught up like that and then I realize I'm caught up because often you don't, right? But faster yep. and faster now I realize, oh, you are massively overthinking. Then for me, before I would make a real effort to try and sort that out. Oh, now I know what's wrong. I'm overthinking. I'll try and fix it. But I've realized and again, this is going to sound like a prescription, but what I've realized is that when I have that realization, it's a calling to engage back with now. It's like, mm -hmm. what's in front of me right now? If I'm having a cup of coffee to taste the cup of coffee, if I'm with another person to go back and to listen to the other person, mm -hmm. to really get involved with what's on the TV screen in front of me, Mm -hmm. or the Instagram feed or whatever. People think that's a distraction. Mm. But engaging with the now is, is, to me, looks like wisdom. And it looks like there's, when we re-engage and we become present, mm. who we really are presence is itself in that moment. So mm -hmm. it's going to sound like a prescription. But time and again, I found that I found because I didn't know what to do next. Right. So I and I as humans, we always want the prescription. But it was like, OK, so I get caught up. Then I notice that I'm caught up. <laughs> yeah, but then what? Right. <laughs> and for me, finding that it's Bill Pettit that pointed to this, actually, like. But then just re-engage with life as it is right now in this moment. Yeah. And we realize, and then we forget about the fact that we were caught up in thought. And it's in the forgetting of it that we fall back into peace, not yeah. the sorting out of it. Like our tendency is to lean into it more. And now I know we've come to the end of this time, so we could talk about this quote for hours, but we just. And I love the fact that you said, oh, are we going to be able to talk about this for half an hour? Like, I know. Yeah. Hours. Like, like three days or something. <laughs> Can you, will you just, will you just read the quote again, if you've got it in front of you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it so one more the time to finish off now we've talked about it. Yeah, so um, the quote is, you have to go beyond all concepts and you will find it in the stillness of your mind, in the quiet chambers of your mind when you go from the known to the unknown, from the physical to the spiritual. When you hear beyond the word, an inner light goes on and it brings out inner knowledge and wisdom, spiritual intelligence before the contamination of human thought. It is a feeling. You are looking for a feeling. Don't listen to the words. Look for a feeling. Mm. 